Hello. Today I want to talk to you about a simple but often discussed topic and that's calculating point values and sizing lots and stop loss. So the aim here is to show you how you can calculate the lot size or the stop loss point based on a given risk. So first we'll need to calculate the value of a single point movement in any given symbol. Then we'll need to calculate the value of the potential loss if you have an existing trade. And then we can show how you can calculate how many points you can risk in your stop loss for a specified risk amount. And finally, we can show how many lots you can trade if you have a fixed stop loss and a fixed risk amount. I'm going to create this code for MetaTrader 4, but I will show you how it can be used also in MetaTrader 5, very simple compatibility changes. And I'm going to write everything inside a script, but I would recommend to you that you take the functions from this and put them into your standard library of functions. I've just created this script file using the wizard. I'm going to put my functions inside the script file because it's easier to demonstrate, but normally I'd put these functions inside a common library somewhere. So the important thing in trying to calculate lot sizes is to know the value of a single point price movement. So I'm going to create a function that gives me the value of a single point. Right, now the important thing here, this is going to calculate the value in my base currency, whatever the base currency for your account is, of a one point movement in the price of a supplied currency, that's this symbol, for one lot because obviously the value of that price movement is going to be different depending on the number of lots. So this is a single lot pricing. To calculate this, I'm going to need three pieces of information. The first is the size of a tick. Now normally a tick size is one point, but it is possible that there might be an instrument somewhere that has a tick size that is multiple tick, that is multiple points. So it's important to actually get the, value, the size of a tick here. And if I were transacting most currencies, most five digit currencies, this tick size will be 0 0.00001. And so far I haven't seen an instance where tick size is different to the point size, but I'm going to use it anyway, just to make sure that I'm compatible in case there is a symbol out there that doesn't have the same tick size as a point size. So the next thing to calculate is the value of a tick. And this is the really important piece. This actually gives me the value in my base currency of a one tick movement in this symbol. So then I need to know the size of a point so that I can compare it to this tick size. And this function, market info symbol mode point, gives me the size of a single point. Now I could perform the rest of this in a single line function, but for demonstration, I'm going to calculate some intermediate values. First is ticks per point. As I said, most of the time tick size is the same as point size. So this ticks per point is just tick size divided by point and mostly will be one. In the case where a tick size might be different, this is going to give me a different value, obviously. And then just one more calculation to get the actual point value. And that's simply the value of a tick, which we calculated here using the mode tick value argument to the market info function, divided by the number of ticks per point that we've calculated here. For this demonstration, I'm just going to print some of the intermediate values so it helps us to see what's happening. So here I'm just going to be printing in the experts log the tick size, the value from here, the tick value, the size of a point, number of ticks per point and point value. And again, this is why I calculated this intermediate value so that it's easy for us to see these when they're printed. And then all that's left is to return the calculated point value. And that is everything in the point value. And as the 
description says this will give the value of a one point movement for one lot in my base currency. I want to run this test and call point value multiple times with different symbols and print values. So rather than put all of that inside the onStart function, I'm just going to make calls from onStart to a test function. Let me put in my test function first. So this will simply tell me the base currency for my account, then it will give me the symbol that's been passed into the test function, calculate the point value using the function below, and then print the value for point for that symbol and the return value from the point value function. So let me add my calls to that in the onStart function. So I'm calling this with Euro Yen, Euro Pound and Aussie Kiwi. The base currency for this account is AUD. So we'll see how it operates when I'm using the base currency as part of the pair and in two instances where I'm not. So compiles, move it out of the way. Let's run that. Now we can see the results here, reading from the bottom. Base currency is AUD, testing for Euro Yen. Tick size in Euro Yen, 0 0.001. Remembering that yen quotes normally to three decimal places. The tick value 1.360915. So that's already telling me, because this is the same as the point size, that the value of a one point movement in the euro yen is worth 1.36 Australian dollars. Uh, ticks per point has come to one because tick size is the same as point size and point value is the same value that we're returning then. And then from this test function, I'm displaying value per point for Euro Yen, 1.360915. And just repeating that for Euro Pound. Euro Pound is a five digit currency, so we're getting tick size as 0.00001, which is also the same as point size, a different tick value, 1.809 which is the value being returned because point is the same as tick size. And then for Aussie Kiwi, tick size is the same as point size, tick value 0 0.93 and point value 0 0.93. Now I should point out these values, the point value will change because they are based on the exchange rate of your base currency in comparison to these currency pairs that we're passing in. So if you are going to use these calculations, don't assume that they are unchanging. Now that's simply given us the value per point. What we want to do now is turn that into something useful in terms of lot sizing. So the first thing I want to do is given a fixed lot size and stop loss, calculate how much value we're placing at risk for a trade. So So here I'm going to call the, I've already called the point value function, so I have that. Um, and then I'm going to use a fixed risk points of 75 points, lots of 0 0.6, and calculating the risk amount then is just the point value from this function multiplied by the number of lots multiplied by points. Very simple calculation. So if you have a fixed lot size and a fixed stop loss, and you want to know how, many, how much you're risking this is the formula to calculate that. The next calculation assumes that you've set a fixed risk amount, maybe based on a percentage of your equity, and you have a fixed lot size, and you want to determine how many points to set your stop loss at.
So here I'm keeping my risk lots at 0 0.6 because that's fixed. I'm saying I want to risk $100 in my base currency. And the calculation of risk points then is the risk amount, $100, divided by the product of point value from this function and the number of lots that I'm risking. So remember point value is the value of a single point for one lot. So we're just multiplying that by the number of lots to get the value of a one point move for my total lot size. And the final situation where we have a fixed risk amount, so again, percentage of equity perhaps, um, and we've got a fixed stop loss because that might be determined by some support or resistance point, And then we want to determine how many lots to trade. So here again, I'm risking $100. My stop loss is going to be at 50 points. And how many lots I should trade is the risk amount, $100, divided by the point value multiplied by the number of points that I'm risking in this case. Now, when I run these, you'll find that things like risk amount or risk lots and risk points won't come out to nice round two-digit numbers that we would need in MetaTrader. I'll leave that to you to decide how you want to round those up or down for your trading, but this will give you the calculation of the number of lots and number of points to risk. Let me compile that to make sure I haven't made any mistakes there. Nope. If we just move it out of the way, I'll clear the earlier information and make this window a little larger. And now if I run that. So we've called it three times. Base currency is always going to be Australian dollars here. Testing for Euro Yen, same thing we had earlier, value per point, which has now changed a little from the last time. The risk amount then, trading 0.6 lots, and at 75 points risk is $61. If I wanted to calculate points risk, again trading 0.6 lots and risking $100, I could place my stop loss at 122 points away. And if I have a risk of $100 and placing my stop loss at 50 points away, I can risk 1.46 or 1.47 lots. And then, of course, the same calculations for Euro Pound and Aussie Kiwi. And that is all you need to calculate lot sizing or risk points using the point value function. So remember, this point value is the key function to give you that valuation. Just before I finish, I'll mention that I've written this for MetaTrader 4 and I've used this market info function and above I have used this account currency function. They are MetaTrader 4 functions that no longer exist in MetaTrader 5. But fortunately the new MetaTrader 5 functions are backward compatible and I can use those in MetaTrader 4. So if you want to write this code in a compatible manner that can be used for MetaTrader 4 or MetaTrader 5, then you would be using the new symbol info function here and the account info function here. I'll just replace those to show you what it means. So here, the account info string function has an argument of account currency and gives the string value of the base currency. And the symbol info double functions here take the arguments of symbol trade tick size, tick value, and symbol point, and give the same results as the market info function earlier. 
I'll just compile that and that compiles and if I move this out of the way and run it we can see that it's still operating and still giving results so I would suggest making your functions compatible where you can and it's in this case relatively easy so that's all there is to the point value function and you've seen the formulae above to convert that in various ways I hope you found this useful if you have then please leave a like and if you'd like to see more of these videos click the subscribe button and the bell icon to be notified when we release new videos thank you for watching